Welcome to another video by Ferris Technology. Today, I want to do a variation on the multi-field search that I just recorded a few days ago. And that is, sometimes you don't have enough room on your form to give them six different fields that they could choose to search from. But you need to give them the flexibility to search more than one field. Well, in comes your combo box. You allow the combo box to, t to let the user select which field they want to search and then put in the search criteria and start their search. So let's show you how I did that one. What I want to do is a, a basic search with a combo box selector. So here's a form that I created. Notice that where it says author last name, it's a combo box. And then search criteria below, I put in Preston as, you know, Preston and child, you see a lot together as authors. And so I put Preston down in the search criteria. And then there's a button for initiating the search. Now in that drop down list, I have book title, author first name, author last name, and book series and book format. So there's five different items that the user can actually search for, depending on what their needs are. So let's show you in the code how we did it. First off, I always look to see what elements I'm going to need. I need first a DAO setup so that I can have access to the objects on the form. The next one is I need to set up a bunch of variables to be able to assemble all the potential different pieces of the SQL code and other miscellaneous uh, variables as needed. The third is the VBA code will assemble the SQL code based on the criteria on the form. Fourth, I'll rebuild the underlying query through the DAO. In other words, I'll delete the previous query and then I'll rebuild it based on the SQL code that we put together. And then the SQL code or the query then is opened to view the data. So let's see the code and see how we did that. First off, we start with the DAO setup at the top of the code here, right under the private sub starting point. You'll notice that I dimensioned DBS MW Books as the database. I also dimensioned a query definition called QDF Lookup. And then I set DBS MW Books to point to the database that I have on the hard drive. This one's for the Merchant's Wagon used bookstore. Okay, so the next thing, after we dimension DBS inventory as a database, QDF ULT lookup as a query definition. I dimension all the variables that I need for the strings in the criteria that I'm going to use to assemble the SQL. And then I set all of those to zero or to null value uh, with the two quotation marks right next to each other. And then I look at that search criteria and assign the value in the combo box to S search criteria. So that gets me started with a baseline with all the others set to zero. And then I've already captured the search criteria from the form. Oh, that's a little bit small. So let's go ahead and expand that and hopefully my editor will move me up in the corner there. So this one, at the top of this list, I have do command AC query close. I'm closing the query. Now this is so that the query, it gets closed if the user left the query open the last time they searched. Because if they left it open and I didn't particularly close it, it would then not reflect the new information that they put on. Okay, so now the next part is the SQL code that doesn't change. It's the setup part where it has all the links to the different tables. It has the inner joins and the outer joins, whatever we needed to assemble the set of data that we're going to present to the user. So that doesn't change. So I'm just assigning that straight to SQL main. Okay, the next thing is I have an order by clause that never change. That is unchanging because I'm just going to make sure it's sorted by the stock location in this particular case. Next, I decided to go with a select case statement. This is where I assemble the query code. Now I've got five options, 
Those options are static, so they're perfect for a select case statement. So I just run through if it's if the value in the combo box is book title, here's the sequel. If it's book format, here's the sequel for that. In other words, it'll go through until it finds the first value. And of course, the combo box can only select one value. It'll go till it finds that first value. It'll end the select and then move on from there. The next piece is I assemble all that SQL code together where I take SQL main ampersand, then I have the appropriate information for where starting that where clause, and then I put all of the sections of SQL code for the where clause, which is the criteria that I just assembled in my select case statement, and then I put the order by statement at the end. So as we go, we take that SQL code at the very end then and delete the previous SQL code in the query QRY inventory. And then we take the QDF, QDF ULT lookup and assign to that the query definition that we created. Uh, we create the query definition and assign it to that for QRY inventory. So we rebuild that query definition. And then we assign the SQL in SQL ult S ultimate filter to the QDF alt ULT lookup dot SQL. That pu pushes the SQL into our newly created query definition called QRY inventory. And then we go ahead and re reopen that query that we closed earlier uh, of QRY inventory. And by doing that, it presents it to the user. So what does that look like? Let's to go take a look. Here we are going to search for book title. I'm going to put in a book title by Stephen King called Desperation. And then I click the Initiate Search button and the query comes up and we only have one book in stock for that. And there's the shelf and tray that it's on. Now, if I choose not to, cho to close query inventory, I'm going to search for last name. I'm going to search for King as in Stephen King or other Kings. And when I initiate the search, I've got Stephen King, MC King, Laurie King. Okay, everybody with author last name of King shows up in the query. Notice that it did accept the new data. It actually did close the query and reopen it, but did it so fast that the user can't even hardly tell. So now I'm gonna look for a book series here. I'm gonna look for Harry Potter, for example. Initiate that search. And in my series and main character field, I find all of the authors related to Harry Potter. And you can see Kenilworthy and a David Colbert and a Dinah Buckholz all wrote uh, in the Harry Potter domain um, and published books concerning those. So that's how it ended up functioning. And I, I think, it, think we accomplished what we needed to, to and set out to do. So I really appreciate you watching. If you found value in this video, please hit the like button and let's get it out to more people. Consider subscribing and we'll continue to put out good valuable lessons in the future. I hope to help you again in our next video. Thanks.